It's an absolute feeling of freedom and excitement, knowing that you're just gonna go out, you're gonna go to sea, you're gonna end up in some exotic foreign land. And for the next days or weeks, your life is just about doing that and everything else is just noise. My name is Brian Troutman and I live on a sailboat with my family. We're currently anchored in beautiful French Polynesia. Delos is specifically designed to cross oceans and stay out at sea, off the grid, anchored out without any support for months at a time. I remember walking down the dock and just seeing like this giant anchor and all the stainless steel and this bow profile tied up to the dock. And I was thinking like, wow, this is the kind of boat that you want to go around the world. This is the helm seat. This is actually where we uh, steer the boat. So right now I'm moving the rudder. This is where I like to drive Delos from. I've got an amazing view and I can steer and see all of my instruments and pop my head out for a little bit of breeze. It's a really nice place to sail from. As a software engineer, I basically woke up early in the morning. I would jump on my emails. I would immediately have this feeling of sinking in the pit of my stomach, like, oh my God, like, what am I doing with my life? My time just wasn't mine. My whole day was divided into like these 55 minute chunks of doing stuff for other people. And it was just like, repeat, 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 like I was on some sort of a treadmill. And I just one day decided, you know what? I'm not gonna do this anymore. I'm gonna leave work behind. I'm gonna sell everything I own. I'm gonna buy a sailboat and I'm gonna take a two year sabbatical and I'm gonna go figure out life. And I just never came back. I pretty much stopped buying stuff. I stopped buying clothes. I stopped traveling. And within about two years, I was able to save a pretty good chunk of money. Just making those small changes in my life really made a huge difference. I searched for about two years to find the right boat. I settled on Delos because I was not a very proficient sailor and this boat in particular has a reputation for being a very solid, very capable boat to take you around the world with a lot of storage, a lot of redundant systems, and a lot of creature comforts as well. Right here, this little magical machine that you can see will turn salt water into fresh water. We turn on the high pressure pump. We turn up the pressure. We wait a second and boom. Now we're making fresh drinking water right from the sea. This is one of the coolest features of the boat. This is actually our water gauge. And so the water gauge is directly below us. The water tank is directly below us in the keel. And if you go like this, it tells you exactly we have 550 liters of fresh water on board. So Delos was actually named Delos when I bought her. And I like the name because it has Greek mythology behind it. It's named after the island of Delos, which is the birthplace of uh, Artemis and Apollo and it's a floating place somewhere between heaven and earth. And I thought, wow, that's very cool. So I kept it. On your mark, get set, go! When I left on the trip, I had two years of savings. Those savings actually ran out along the trip three different times. Along the way, we've worked odd jobs to survive. I've maxed out credit cards. I've even cashed in my old 401k.
was not supposed to be a full-time job. It was just going to sustain us and help fund the trip a little bit. And now it's all we do. Morning. The fridge is a little bit bare. It's been a few weeks since we've actually done a shopping mission. Check this out. But today we're going to take a little mission and show you what it's like to go on a shopping adventure, cruiser style. Ready? Pick it up the dinghy. We'll just get into our dinghy, which is our version of a car. This yes. place we're at right now, Morea, is incredibly well set up. It's actually got this little supermarket in the next bay over. Turns out it is not cheap to live in paradise. So two, well, really one small cart and a few extra things. It was 50,501 XPF Polynesian francs, which is just about $500. And we just got normal stuff, you know? Nothing crazy. cruising just as soon as you get comfortable it comes in like knocks you right in the ass literally i was passing stuff to casa and the shopping cart just rolled right off the end of the dock with the backpack in it it's got the cameras it's got the drone it's got the phones it's got the wallet the money like oh my god <laughs> We live and die by the weather out here, and so the weather determines everything we do. This life is often uncomfortable. It's a ton of work. It's way more work than living in a house. Imagine if you took your house and you put it in a corrosive saltwater environment, and then you knocked it on its side and shook it around a little bit, and imagine how many things might fall over or break. That's sort of like our day-to-day our -day existence out here. because this is a very kind of transient lifestyle, we meet so many amazing, incredible people over the years. You form these very intense, like tight, kind of close friendships and bonds. And then all of a sudden one day it's like, psh, it's just over. All right, you guys ready to come down below, see what the boat's like? Come on, check it out. So let's start out in the kitchen. Because we're on a sailboat and we cook on the open ocean and the boat's often going crazy, we have this little guy to keep us safe. You just clip it on like that, and then it keeps you kind of from falling out of the galley if the weather gets too wild. This is a gimbaled stove, so it self-levels. In here, this is our living room. This is our salon. Pretty standard. The only thing that's really different about this is our freezer, you'll notice, is under the seat because we're making good use of space. So if you look in here, we've got some of uh, the fish that we catch. We keep in here. We make ice. We have chicken frozen. When we're out sailing from island to island, we have a fishing rod and reel and we have hand lines that we pull out and we make some incredible catches. Like on the sail from Mexico to French Polynesia, we hooked a gigantic wahoo. It's just an incredibly beautiful fish. That gave us so much meat, it took us over four months to finish it. Looking into the floors, we've got a lot of storage. So in fact, we can keep like three to six months of food on Delos at any one time because we can really only keep two to three weeks of fresh food on the boat. And after that, then we're into the canned veggies and fruit. Delos is really well set up for accommodation. We have three cabins in total. We have a cabin in the back, which is our bedroom. We have a cabin in front, which is Sierra's bedroom. 
And then we have a little pass-through cabin that's like a hallway with a bed. We have this bunk uh, right behind me that actually pulls out and gets bigger. The heads on Delos are very compact, but I find them to be incredibly functional. So we have the basics. We have a nice deep sink so that water doesn't spill out when the boat starts going crazy on the waves. This is our electric flush toilet over here in the corner. To shower, we pull our curtain all the way around. And then the shower head is right behind this door. And then the whole room is basically a shower. This is something you don't see on every boat. Ta-da! <laughs> washing machine. It's not a big one. It's eight kilos, but it does everything we need it to do and it's worth its weight in gold. We have two lockers set aside to medical supplies. So we have, for example, a bag for light trauma or light cuts, which would just be like band-aids all the way up to a suture kit and a skin stapler. So the space in itself is not big. It's maybe comparable to a very small studio apartment in size of things, but we have the biggest backyard you could ever imagine and we can change our backyard. So that's cool. Whoa, so smooth. Do you see how smooth that was? Now that we have Sierra, I really want her to know what it's like to live in her culture. I want her to know her grandparents and to know her cousins. And so at some point, I don't know when, I do see us spending more and more time on land or maybe instead of living full time in the boat, we'll live half time on land and half time on the boat. I don't think I'll ever stop sailing or stop exploring. This trip has changed my DNA at the core where I'm a different person than I was than I started.